Uh, welcome. If you've just tuned in, welcome on board. I'm Nana Aquia. Don't go anywhere. We've got still loads to come on the show. It's just coming up to 21 minutes after 5 o'clock. This is GB News. It's time for our Great British Debate this hour. And I'm asking, should we have migrant crime league tables? Now, the former minister, uh, immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, wants statistics showing the nationalities of migrant groups with the highest rates, uh, crime rates to be published annually. Now, this is what he had to say on GB News yesterday. I want the most honest and transparent debate about immigration, legal or illegal, that we can possibly have. And it is wrong that the government or other agencies hide statistics. I have laid an amendment to the upcoming Criminal Justice Bill, which tackles one of these issues, and it says that the government must publish statistics on crimes and sentences by country of origin and by visa and asylum status. I think that the public want to know who's coming into our country and what the economic, the fiscal and the societal impact of immigration is. Well, if implemented, these new rules could allow the Home Office to have stricter visa checks and deportation policies. So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, should we have migrant crime league tables? Well, joining me now is barrister and writer Stephen Barrett, political commentator Connor Tomlinson, and also former Labour aide Stella Sekundu. I didn't say that right, but I just guessed it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm going to start with you, Steve. Um, can we start, Stephen? Can we, can we start... With this legally, is there, is there, are there any legal issues to this? No, and I want to be very clear about this. Within the current legal framework, there is no reason I can see why the government cannot publish this information if people want it. Um, under the current Freedom of Information Act, Section 13, there's a power that will, to, to ask for, for payment if, if it causes an undue e expense to the government to release it. And the reason I raise that is I know that GB News offered to pay. And if you offer to pay, well, then it seems perfectly reasonable under the current existing legal framework that the government simply releases this information to GB News and you cover the government's, well, all of our costs. But if you, if you want to do it, I don't see that there's any legal bar to so do it. I'd also add, Nana, that we are becoming a very infantilized society. And are we truly sitting here discussing whether or not we should be told the truth or lied to? Is that really what we're saying? I either will be told what's happening or we'll just pretend it isn't. I mean, that, that, that's an, I mean, it's a personal political position. If you want to live in a society which, which doesn't tell you anything at all and, and simply pretends everything is, 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 is rosy, well, that's up to you. But I used to live in a grown-up society where people were told the truth and then we argued about it. Of course we did, that's, that's political debate and I won't engage in what the solutions are. But we were at least told the truth. Mm -hmm. It does strike me that if you wanted to publish it, they should be doing that sort of thing anyway. They should know that anyway. Not sure how that helps with the whole migrant situation. Uh, Stella, if you could pronounce your surname for me. Sandekidu. Sandekidu. Get ready to be black, black with Nana now. Look, I'm going to tell you what's actually going on there, right? There is, Robert Jennings is trying to suggest that there is some kind of conspiracy where uh, the government has some data that they're not releasing. Really what is going on is they're either not gathering this data or nobody has asked for them or they're not relevant because if they, this data exists then you can just FOI them or he could very easily just submit a written question to the relevant minister and he could get this data himself. Or indeed when he was immigration minister, which remember used to be his brief, he could have done that job already. But now he's in the back benches. He's no longer a minister. He has decided that he wants to run to be the leader of the Conservative Party. So he needs to find a red meat policy to show that he's really as right wing as the next best, best candidate. And that all along he was supporting all of these things that, in Robert Jernick's opinion, is going to lead the next Conservative leadership. But what he's actually suggesting, there's a discrepancy between what he's saying he's going to do and what the amendment actually achieves, which I have to clarify once again, this is just an amendment on the, on the criminal justice bill. It's probably not even going to be voted on. So as far as I'm concerned, this is all just tricks, tricks to show that he is one thing or another. No, what the policy is, is just that they're going to have a league table showing which nationalities um, have committed the most crimes or whatever, which is 
very discriminatory in my opinion because what you're saying is okay so if we had a lot of Italians last year who committed rapes then that means that the Italians that are going to apply for a visa next year are more likely to be rapists themselves so we need to be extra careful when we are considering their visa applications so this is the, the, the this is what he's saying is going to happen he said we're going to apply more scrutiny to the nationalities where who, who have committed more crimes in previous years so you're going to to punish basically people because they happen to come from the well, same place well, as people who have committed crimes. Well, okay. I mean, that, that's, that, that, is, that is a way of looking at it. I see that, but there is a logic to it, but it's slightly illogical as well. Connor? Yeah, I'm not sure whether your last speaker, Nana, is dishonest or just perhaps places too much faith in the institutions and their ability to report this data because the Office for National Statistics declared it does not want to report data on crime committed per ethnicity because some racists were using this to suggest that all black people were committing crimes. Neil O'Brien, an MP, put in a request to, I believe it was the Department for Work and Pensions, asking for tax contributions by national origin. And they said, we're no longer going to collect this data. By the by, uh, the Netherlands actually released data on this a little while ago, and it found that immigrants from China, East Asia, and Europe were net tax contributors, while as mir uh, whereas immigrants from Turkey, the Northeast, uh, North, uh, Middle East, and North Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa were not tax contributors. So basically, they're not going to collect and publish this data because it looks bad for the narrative. Now, I think there is a moral duty to publish this data because we know there are countries and cultures which do not have the same universal respect for human life that historically Christian English culture does. They do not have a sense of fair play or reciprocity. They do not see women and children's well-being as good unto itself. They see it as instrumental to the pleasure and power of the most violent men in civilization. And so I think we should record that, as recently the Danes have done, and say, yes, we should be discriminatory to people from those cultures to protect the native Brits and the Im immigrants who have already peacefully assimilated here. Well, I think the assumption that discrimination is a bad thing every time it's used is not actually... It, we always screen and discriminate in some way. Sometimes it can work negatively. Sometimes it, it needs to be done. Stephen, I noticed you raising your eyebrows, so, or one eyebrow at least, but instead of us talking, why? <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, I think it's important to note that as, uh, they are refusing to release this data, saying that it would cost too much to do so. So to pretend that it, it can happen is, I think, not terribly um, helpful. And I'm very conscious of an argument that keeps cropping up in public life, which is to say, first of all, this isn't happening. And then to say, oh, and by the way, it's a good thing, which was, I think, the experience of, of, of listening to, to, to the very um, uh, no doubt learned lady uh, talk. We need to be truthful about what is going on and what decisions we're making in order to make informed decisions. It is your personal political opinion whether you want this data released or not. It's not terribly helpful to tie all that up in emotion and shame and just a lot of the, the sort of the infantile approach we, we've had to these discussions and debates. Do we want this data released? If not, why not? I mean, racist people breathe oxygen. I am not going to stop breathing oxygen because racist people do. So we do need to limit guilt by association. I mean, it's got completely out of hand. And, and you know, of course, racist people will do awful racist things. Have we got a plague of racist people at the moment? Or have we got a, an awful trouble with crime at the moment? Which one have we got a trouble with? Which policy do we want to fix? What do we want to do to fix it? But ultimately, I think, Nana, the point I do want to make is that we are not infants. So we keep being treated like infants, but I'm not an infant because I'm, I'm not unarmed. I am armed, Nana. I am armed as every adult watching this show is armed with a vote. And it's through voting and democracy that I will use, you know, my political power and will. You don't need to run off to, to, to judges, lo lovely and charming as they are. You don't need to appeal to, to some sort of dad concept off in the, in the sky. I've got to vote. We've all got to vote. And if we want to do something about this, we should use our political power to do so. Thank you, Stephen. Right, so I'm going to ask you all then, Stella. Um, so do we need... Should we have a league table for these... Uh, a migrant league table? No, we shouldn't have a league table because what we know is that first-generation immigrants... Is just a yes or no? No, we should <laughs> Sorry. Connor, yes or no? 
Uh, UK is number one for for in the world for crimes committed by people of foreign extraction. We need it, yes. Yes. And, uh, Stephen, uh, do, do you wish to give, give a... Uh, not for me. Not for you. <laughs> I didn't think so. Stephen Barrett, lovely to talk to you. He's a barrister and writer. Connor Tomlinson, political commentator and former Labour aide, uh, Labour aide Stella. Sandikudu. It's not right, is it? <laughs> Sandikudu. <laughs> Sandikudu. I thought I'd got it then. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sala, <laughs> 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 What have you done?